Greetings, allies, enablers, and bootlickers. Well, here we are. For the past year, I've been standing in front of you and telling you the unvarnished truth, the truth about who we are as Republicans, what we want to do, and what we think of all of you. As I stand here speaking to you, Election Day 2024 is tomorrow, which means it's time for those of you who are still undecided to make your choice. When you make that choice, you need to ask yourself some questions. You need to ask yourself, for one thing, who you want to be in charge of this country for at least the next four years. Do you want the other side? They'll try to raise taxes on wealthy people like me and then use that revenue to fund government programs to assist poor people, to make buying a house or going to college more affordable, to subsidize child care. And maybe all that sounds good to some of you, but here's the bump in the road. I don't want to pay more taxes. I can afford it. Shit, I could afford it if they jacked the top tax rate up way higher than what's in their nominee's plan. I just don't want to. Know what else they'll do? If they get the chance, they'll restore the right to have an abortion nationwide. All those women who died from complications of miscarriages because they live in states that have banned abortion since the Supreme Court struck down Roe v. Wade and the medical procedure to save their lives was a bit too close to the legal definition of abortion. In the future, if the other side gets their way, most women in situations like that will probably survive. Doctors won't be legally blocked from treating them so they won't die. Is that what you want? Young women, really young women, teenagers, children, who get pregnant as a result of being sexually assaulted will be able to safely and legally end those pregnancies. Is that what you want? Saving the lives of women. Few things make a Republican's blood run colder than the thought of that. Ugh. Know what else their nominee wants to do? Eliminate price gouging. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought this was America. If I own a business, and I own several, not that I'll ever tell you which ones, if I own a business and I want to charge people 50 bucks for a bottle of water in the aftermath of a hurricane, I should have the right to do that, shouldn't I? It's literally my business. Why should they have a right to my water? Because they're thirsty? What the hell kind of a country would that be? That's another question you need to ask yourselves. What kind of a country do you want this to be? You want this to be a country where we don't order law enforcement to hunt migrants for sport? People came to this country illegally. They don't belong here. And sure, most of the stories our side has been telling you about roaming gangs of violent immigrant criminals taking over apartment buildings or... Haitians stealing and eating people's pets are made up, but who cares? The other side will tell you, oh, most immigrants, documented or undocumented, are peaceful and law-abiding, and many of the undocumented ones have lived here for decades and started families and worked and paid taxes and contributed to their communities, but come on! Is all of that worth you sometimes being unable to make out what they say because of their accent? or getting upset when you hear them speaking a language you don't understand even if they aren't talking to you, or you just knowing they're here? We were here first! Who asked them to come here? And yeah, okay, you got me. Our mass deportation plan would cost way more than anything the other side is proposing and would take decades to accomplish and is mostly just an excuse to build large-scale concentration camps for brown people, and eventually black people, and gay people, and trans people, and journalists, and radical leftists, and liberals, and moderates, and the camps are going to get a lot of use, is what I'm saying. Do you want this to be a country where gay and trans people are treated with respect? As equals in society, even though you think they're weird and you don't get it? 
They're different in ways that you find uncomfortable and threatening. What gives them the right to threaten you? Do you want this to be a country that allows people like that to live their lives in ways that will not affect you at all, but which you will occasionally have to see and be reminded of? Or do you want this to be a country where people like that are crushed into invisibility and silence? Do you want this to be a country where we aren't allowed to run the government because we lost an election? Since when? Who came up with that shit? Do you want this to be a country where healthcare is affordable to everyone who needs it? Where most people aren't one medical emergency away from a lifetime of crushing debt? Oh, people can't afford to go to the doctor. Oh, people can't afford to go to the hospital. Like, how is that my problem? Or your problem? Why should anybody else's problems be your problems? That gets to the heart of the matter right there. Because the most important question you need to ask yourself is what kind of a person do you want to be? And I'm not talking about what kind of a person you actually are as determined by your actions and thoughts and feelings. I'm talking about the kind of person you want to be seen as because that's really what matters. We are Republicans. And who are Republicans? Republicans are people who demand to be treated as though we are good and moral and righteous no matter what we say or do. That's who Republicans are. That's what it's all about. I'm not gonna stand here and talk to you about policies. If I did, I'd have to spend the entire time talking about the other side because we don't have any policies. That's not what we're about. We pretend we care about policy. We act like we have all these big, serious thoughts about the economy or the social order or foreign relations, but I don't give a shit about that, and most of you rubes are too dim to even grasp the basic concepts. Who's the patron saint of our party? Ronald Reagan. Republicans invoke Ronald Reagan more often than Christians invoke Jesus. Actually, most of you are Christians, aren't you? And you still invoke Reagan more than Jesus. I have no problem with that. It makes sense, actually. The Reagan we talk about has about as much in common with the real Reagan as the Jesus you believe in has in common with the historical Jesus. Why do we love Reagan so much? Let me ask that in a different way. Why do you love Reagan so much? Because I love that his tax policies put a hell of a lot more money in my pocket, but his tax policies didn't do shit for any of you. You love Reagan because of the story he told you about yourselves. He told you that you were good people and that America was a good country and that if America had problems, none of them were your fault. You liked that, didn't you? You liked being told that you weren't racist or ignorant or wrong. Didn't matter that it wasn't true. You've never really cared about what was true, have you? All that mattered was that the people in charge were telling you what you wanted to be true. Now, I'm not going to tell you that you're good people. Can't stomach that. I think you're horrible people. Not because you're racist and petty and intolerant. I'm all of those things too. I think you're horrible because you're poor and weak and needful. You're beneath me and I deplore the fact that in order to gain the power to which I feel entitled, I have to ask you for your help, your support, your votes. But if that's what it takes, I'll do it. Until I don't have to anymore. And I won't tell you that you're good people, but I'll tell you something that you like hearing just as much. I'll tell you that I'll hurt the ones you don't like. I'll hurt the ones you're afraid of. I'll hurt the ones that aren't like you. The ones I've been telling you to blame for all your struggles and disappointments. Immigrants, black people, brown people, women, gay people, trans people, protesters, poor people, which is sick because most of you are poor people, but you know that when I say people on welfare are lazy, I'm not talking about those of you who are on welfare. And when I say that drug addicts are low-life degenerates, I don't mean those of you. Who are drug addicts, except if you want to know the truth, I really do. I am talking about you. I do mean you. You are lazy. You are lowlifes. I despise you. The only pleasure you give me is when I'm able to lift myself up just a little bit higher by standing on top of you.